What's going on, everybody? I'm Stubbs. This is Retro Handheld's Weekly, your number one source for retro handheld news. We have a lot to unpack today, so just settle in after this catchy theme song. In today's number one thing, Aya Neo, they make the most beautiful hardware. Uh, the Aya Neo Air sings with how just sleek it is and, and ergonomic. Imagine taking that shell, putting in a badass ARM chip, and running Android on it. That's what we have here. Arthur is saying, I came into the hobby with this love for Android. Arthur wants to design and manufacture the very best Android handheld. That is awesome news because guess what? I got into this space to find the best Android handheld. One Android handheld to truly rule them all. So if you combine Aya Neo with the fact that they can make this awesome high-end hardware, and I bet they can source some very high-end chips for running top-end PS2, GameCube, Switch. Currently, right now, we have the GPD XP Plus with the Dimensity 1200. That is awesome, but I want them to best that. I want to get like a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, Gen 2, an 888, an XR2, I don't care, just give us something awesome. They're gonna put it into the Ioneo Air shell. Same weight and feel of the Air, which I love the feel of the Air, I just don't like the software because the Windows experience is subpar for me. Pairing this with Android, man, that's gonna be good stuff. They are saying on this first one, they're not pursuing the ultimate, it's gonna be more balanced. Uh, but new products in the future will seek more extremes, so more extreme processor. So they're saying the first one here, don't expect the world from us, but we are entering this space, and I am really really stoked to see it. So Ioneo, good on you. Let's get that Android top-end hardware. Now, another new player on the scene here, we have Absolute. Apparently, it's pronounced like that. A-B-X-Y Loot. Absolute. They're making a cloud streaming handheld with running Android that's going to compete with the Logitech G Cloud. So, I mean, it's an attractive looking device. It looks a lot like the G Cloud, right? I like the different colored joysticks. The blue is fun on this model. This is running a MediaTek MT8365 for around 200 bucks. Chipset, unfortunately, is super weak. I mean, I'm talking PSP is gonna struggle. Dreamcast is gonna struggle. It's not gonna be great. Uh, it has a 1080p seven inch screen. It will be good for streaming, supposedly, but it does have Wi-Fi 5, not Wi-Fi 6. If you want something just for streaming and you don't want to pay 250 or 300 for the G Cloud, this could be a decent option. And I like the form factor. The ergonomics look pretty good. Love the ergonomics of my G Cloud. Okay, so four gigabytes of RAM. It's strange to pair so much RAM with such a weak processor, right? The 8365. Uh, it's 64 gigs of internal storage. Display, yeah, 60 hertz. That's cool. Bluetooth. There's a mic. Gyroscope support. Has vibration. Rumble, 5200 milliamp hour battery. That's not bad. Overall, I'm pretty ho-hum on this so far. I mean, that chip, again, is not going to be getting you much. I would just pick up the G Cloud for $50 more. They should have put a more powerful processor in there. It's unfortunate, uh, but it does look like it might be okay for streaming. So more to come on this. Will I pick one up? I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know, guys. I can tell you one thing, though. One thing I will pick up is more shirts from the Retro Game Course merch store. Retro Game Core, your number one Russ for retro gaming. Also, if you could become a patron, you become eligible to get an RH Legend sticker. Let's move on, shall we? So, here we are, three weeks into 2023, and you thought we'd go a whole month without a new Anburnic device being announced. You'd be wrong, because look at this, we have the RG405M, that's right, it's like the 505, but it's a 405, so it has a four inch screen, 4x3 aspect ratio, 640 by 480 with a metal shell. So here we can see inside of it, it has a venting here. I don't see any active cooling. Here's what's interesting on it. And Burnick is going back to the RG350 design where they have a joystick up top. A lot of people aren't happy with that location for 4x3 gaming, especially since this has the T618 processor like the 505. If it's 4x3, 
really should have that down below. See, I got uh, into this scene through having the Retroid Pocket 2. Retroid Pocket 2, I got very used to having that joystick up top. It's kind of comfortable just having the, the joystick so easy to access. And I just kind of leave my thumb there and lazily play my platformers. Now, if you're playing Street Fighter or something, you are going to probably want that D-pad up top. But I'm okay with the placement here, and I'm excited to see this because KTR1 also has a version that looks just like this. Just like it with that joystick up top, and I'm a fan. I am sure we'll be seeing this very soon. I don't know any other information other than the fact that it does have a T618 processor in it from Unisoc. This does look like a prototype. This was leaked by Max Zhao today. I don't know if I'm excited for Ambernic to have another handheld already. More to come on that. Not only that, but watch this video. Nate dropped in here today. Nate the Great. And Burnick's making a micro device. It looks to be a Funky S clone of some sort. I All I know about this is that it has a 1.5 inch screen. Yeah, I mean, that's teeny tiny. It's It looks bigger than the Fun Key, so it's definitely a bigger shell. So maybe it's a little easier to hold. Has that D-pad, the face buttons. I hope they put as big of a battery as possible into that shell. A Dreamcast VMU handheld. Futes, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's not sure about this one. Some people are saying, yeah, it's a novelty handheld. We don't know the name yet. I've named it the Anburnic Micro for the moment. Thinking it could be up to $70. We'll see. People are wondering, will it have Wi-Fi? You know, I hope so, although I don't think so. I, I, I would highly doubt it. Lots of new stuff coming. To wrap things up today, custom firmware. So Christian Haitian has been at it, doing constant updates for ArcOS. I love ArcOS. It's just uh, an operating system that covers so many devices, so many 3326 devices, now the RG353, 503. Uh, Christian is releasing, it seems like, almost an update a day. Fute put out a release of Jealous as well, another update for INEO handhelds, x86 handhelds, and I guess an Orange Pi 5. That's really cool. Of course, that is uh, propagated down to unofficial OS, or UOS for short, run by Retro GFX. Uh, we're going to see that in more and more handhelds, not just Windows, of course. Uh, unofficial OS is covering all of the Ambernic handhelds. Another update for, as well, Tomato OS for the Trim UI Smart. Jutley's here from RG Handhelds is showing, hey, look, we added a bunch of new systems. That's awesome. Satellaview, that's one I haven't tried before. Commodore Bandai, so many things, so many changes. Get your tomatoes out, because we're about to have a bisque going. Tomato bisque. It's my favorite. I don't know what else is there to say. This has been Stubbs, and this has been RH Weekly. Take care of your handhelds, everybody, and take care of each other. I will see you next week. That's all I got.